Welcome to Searching the Scriptures. Our Bible teacher will be Gunther von Haringa Sr. In this series of studies, we will be focusing on the Book of Judges. So without further ado, let's look into God's Word, the Bible. Good evening and welcome to Searching the Scriptures. This is going to be Judges 4, Part 19, and today's date is June 21st, 2017. I'll go ahead and read uh, verses 15 through 17 of Judges 4. And Jehovah discomfited Sisera and all his chariots and all his host with the edge of the sword before Barak, so that Sisera lighted down off his chariot and fled away on his feet. But Barak pursued after the chariots and after the host unto Herosheth of the Gentiles, and all the host of Sisera fell upon the edge of the sword, and there was not a man left. Howbeit Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin, the king of Hazor, and the house of Heber the Kenite. We've been learning more about this battle between Sisera and Barak and the victory which God brought about for the Israelites. As we read in the last phrase of verse 16 concerning Sisera's army, and there was not a man left. These two terms appear in nine citations. The following are some examples from the plagues of Egypt and the Red Sea crossing. The two words, and there was not a man, is Strong's number 259, and left is Strong's number 7064. We find these two expressions in verse 31 of Exodus 8, 20 to 32, regarding the plague of flies. And Jehovah said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. For lo, he cometh forth to the water and say unto him, Thus saith Jehovah, let my people go that they may serve me, else if thou wilt not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thy houses. And the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground whereon they are. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there, to the end that to the end thou mayest know that I am Jehovah in the midst of the earth. And I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. And Jehovah did so, and there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh, and into his servants' houses, and into all the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted by reason of the swarm of flies. And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron, and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses said, It is not meet so to do. For we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to Jehovah our God. Lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, and will they not stone us? We will go three days' journey into the wilderness, and sacrifice to Jehovah our God, as he shall command us. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go, that ye may sacrifice to Jehovah your God in the wilderness. Only ye shall not go very far away, 
entreat for me. And Moses said, Behold, I go out from thee, and I will entreat Jehovah that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people tomorrow. But let not Pharaoh deal deceitfully any more in not letting the people go to sacrifice to Jehovah. And Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated Jehovah. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. And he removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. There remained not one. And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also, neither would he let the people go. Likewise, verse 19 of Exodus 10, 1 to 20, contains these two terms as well. And please note God's purpose, which he revealed to Moses in the first two verses. And Jehovah said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I might show these my signs before him, and that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son and of thy son's son what things I have wrought in Egypt and my signs which I have done among them, that ye may know how that I am Jehovah. And Moses and Aaron came in unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus saith Jehovah God of the Hebrews, How long wilt thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else, if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow will I bring the locusts into thy coast. And they shall cover the face of the earth, that one cannot be able to see the earth, and they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped, which remaineth unto you from the hail, and shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the field. And they shall fill thy houses, and the houses of all thy servants, and the houses of all the Egyptians, which neither thy fathers nor thy father's fathers have seen since the day that they were upon the earth unto this day. And he turned himself and went out from Pharaoh. And Pharaoh's servants said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the men go, that they may serve Jehovah their God. Knowest thou not yet that Egypt is destroyed? And Moses and Aaron were brought again unto Pharaoh. And he said unto them, Go, serve Jehovah your God, but who are they that shall go? And Moses said, We will go with our young, and with our old, with our sons, and with our daughters, with our flocks, and with our herds, will we go. For we must hold a feast unto Jehovah. And he said unto them, Let Jehovah be so with you, as I will let you go and your little ones look to it, for evil is before you. Not so. Go now, ye that are men, and serve Jehovah, for that ye did desire. And they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. And Jehovah said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come up upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, even all that the hail hath left. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt, and Jehovah brought an east wind upon the land all that day and all that night. And when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. And the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested in all the coasts of Egypt. Very grievous were they. Before them there was no such locusts as they, neither after them shall be such, for they covered the face of the whole earth, so that the land was darkened. 
and they did eat every herb of the land and all the fruit of the trees which the hail had left. And there remained not any green thing in the trees or in the herbs of the field through all the land of Egypt. Then Moses called for, excuse me, then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste. And he said, I have sinned against Jehovah your God and against you. Now therefore forgive, I pray thee, my sin only this once, and entreat Jehovah your God that he may take away from me this death only. And he went out from Pharaoh and entreated Jehovah. And Jehovah turned a mighty strong west wind, which took away the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust in all the coasts of Egypt. Those are our two words. But Jehovah hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. Similarly, verse 28 of Exodus 14, 9 to 31 also maintains, but the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them in camping by the sea beside Piahiroth before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto Jehovah. And they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of Jehovah, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians, whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. Jehovah shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And Jehovah said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them, and I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his host, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am Jehovah, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and Jehovah caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass 
that in the morning watch, Jehovah looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for Jehovah fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And Jehovah said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand over the sea that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared and the Egyptians fled against it and Jehovah overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. Those are our two words. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus Jehovah saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which Jehovah did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared Jehovah and believed Jehovah and his servant Moses. All right, let's now consider verse 17 in Judges 4. Howbeit Sisera fled away on his feet to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. For there was peace between Jabin the king of Hazor and the house of Heber the Kenite. We've already investigated the two words uh, fled away and on his feet having to do with Sisera's escape presumably to a place of safety, to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite. And previously we learned that Heber had separated himself from the Kenites as they represent Cain or the institutional end time churches and denominations. Furthermore, in part 15, we learned that Heber had pitched his tent or tabernacle in the plain of Zaanaim, which is the plural form of Zan, which is 6813. And it appears only once as that shall not be taken down. Uh, in verse 20 of Isaiah 33, 20 to 24, look upon Zion, the city of our solemnities. Thine eye shall see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, a tabernacle that shall not be taken down. This is the same word uh, tent, tabernacle tent at Strong's number 168. Since we've already examined the terms tent, Heber and Kenite, that leaves jail and the wife both of which only appear together in two other references. In this chapter in verse 21 and also in Judges 5, 24. Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent and took a hammer in her hand and went softly unto him and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it to the ground, for he was fast asleep and weary, so he died. Blessed above women, this is Judges 5.24, shall jail the wife of Heber the Kenite be. Blessed shall she be above women in the tent. And the word for wife is the same word for um, shall she be above women. It's uh, Strong's number 802. 
<clears throat> excuse me now, to gain a little better understanding of who Jael typifies, let's look at the root words. Uh, Jael is 3278 and is derived from the identical spelling of 3277, which appears as mountain goats three times in these next passages. Uh, for example, it appears in verse 2 of 1 Samuel 24, 1 to 7. Actually, it's wild goats, not mountain goats, but wild goats. And it came to pass when Saul was returned from following the Philistines that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took 300 chosen men, I'm sorry, 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. Uh, that's 3277 of the wild goats. And he came to the sheep coats, by the way, where was a cave. And Saul went in to cover his feet, and David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which Jehovah said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privily or privately, and it came to pass afterward that David's heart smote him, because he had cut off Saul's skirt. And he said unto his men, Jehovah forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, Jehovah's anointed, to stretch forth mine hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of Jehovah. So David stayed his servants with these words and suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. <clears throat> Now, in another passage, uh, Job 39, 1-4, in verse 1, God asks this question of Job. Knowest thou the time when the wild goats, that's our word of the rock, bring forth? Or canst thou mark when the hinds do calve? Canst thou number the months that they fulfill? Or knowest thou the time when they bring forth? They bow themselves, they bring forth their young ones, they cast out their sorrows. Their young ones are in good liking, they grow up with corn, they go forth, and return not unto them. Lastly, we can examine verse 18 of Psalm 104, uh, 1 to 35 which magnificently extols the creator and sustainer of both physical as well as spiritual life for his works which he freely bestows upon mankind and this world that he spoke into existence. Bless Jehovah, O my soul. O Jehovah, my God, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty who covers thyself with light as with a garment, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, who maketh his angels spirits, his ministers a flaming fire, who laid the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever. Thou coverest it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. They go up by the mountains. They go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast founded for them. 
Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. He sendeth the springs into the valleys, which run among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. By them shall the fowls of the heaven have their habitation, which sing among the branches. He watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle, an herb for the service of man, that he may bring forth food out of the earth, and wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengtheneth man's heart. The trees of Jehovah are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon, which he hath planted, where the birds make their nests, the stork, the fir trees are her house, the high hills are a refuge for the wild goats, that's our word, and the rocks for the conies. He appointed the moon for seasons, the sun knoweth his going down. Thou makest darkness, and it is night, wherein all the beasts of the forest do creep forth. The young lions roar after their prey and seek their meat from God. The sun ariseth, they gather themselves together and lay them down in their dens. Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. O Jehovah, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. So is this great and wide sea, wherein are things creeping innumerable, both small and great beasts. They, there go the ships, there is that Leviathan, whom thou hast made to play therein. These wait all upon thee that thou mayest give them their meat in due season. That thou givest them they gather. Thou openest thy hand, they are filled with good. Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled. Thou takest away their breath, they die, and return to their dust. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. The glory of Jehovah shall endure forever. Jehovah shall rejoice in his works. He looketh on the earth and it trembleth. He toucheth the hills and they smoke. I will sing unto Jehovah as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in Jehovah. Let the sinners be consumed out of the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless thou Jehovah, O my soul. Praise ye Jehovah. Well, it looks like we're about out of time for today. So I'm gonna stop here. And Lord willing, in our next study, we will continue examining the grandparent word for jail and or wild goat, which is spelled identically to the other two, as well as the uh, parent word. And it's uh, predominantly rendered as profit or profitable. That is the, the grandparent word. The parent word is the wild goat that we looked at today. Thank you for joining us today for Searching the Scriptures. Until next time, to God be the glory.